Wake up world, good morning trees, hello birds, don't mind me. Hi, it's Ethan McKinley. It's episode uh, 26 yeah. of the... Yeah, hey. yes, oh, awesome. Thank you, Captain Kirk. It's episode 26 <laughs> of the Two Minute Terminator, and we're going from minutes 48 to 50. I think, I could be wrong, but... Who cares if you're wrong? That's what this show's all about. It's all about fun and sun and like dystopian futures and killer robots. Such jolly music. <laughs> Take it away. Oh yes, here we go. Uh, today's bumpy music is Leonard Roseman's soundtrack to uh, Star Trek The Voyage Home. Let's just turn you down there a bit, Leonard, because you're, you're getting a bit crazy there. You see, this uh, theme is very similar because he did the soundtrack to RoboCop 2, which is kind of what like ruined Basil Polidorus' score from the first one, because it sounds almost exactly like his uh, Star Trek 5. Yeah, 5 oh. soundtrack. Well, it says Star Trek 1V here. That would denote it's 1-4. Oh, oh God! Start again, Ethan. Sorry, Star Trek 5 was last night. Star Trek 4 is today. I apologise. The Voyage Home. Have you seen The Voyage Home, Ellie? I haven't, no. You haven't? No. Oh, it's, it's arguably the best Star Trek film. Really? Yeah. Who's in it? I'll let that sink in. Uh, it's the Rocky 4 of Star Trek films, because Rocky 4, I guess, is arguably in common as the best uh, Rocky film. <laughs> With Drago, the Russian, Dolph Lundgren's in it, you know. You could argue it's uh, Rocky 3, but Rocky. Rocky 3 is weirdly gay and homoerotic. Not that that's bad, but it's funny, but it kind of ruins the story in a sense because they're skipping around in like little uh, underboob tops and hugging under -boob. it. Underboob. Underboob. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. T's in it though. He's like, shut up, woman. Shut up, woman. And he tells Rocky's wife to shut up. It's great. <laughs> I'm going to have you a woman, woman. <laughs> uh, I'm Ellie Fitzgerald, I'm the other co-host of the uh, Two Minute Terminator. The other uh, co-host. There's only one co-host, Ellie, and that's you, babe. Oh, well, I am the co-host. Well, if you say other co-hosts, you kind of like, uh, you you know, you take away from your, like, dignity and position. Oh, I have none of that. Which is on the floor, uh, cleaning Ethan. up. Yes. Hit the music. Howdy, stranger. Don't say howdy, stranger, to me. You didn't do the fourth. Thank God. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> yeah, it sucked yeah. Yeah. Yes, we are back. Hello, everyone. I'll just put Leonard Rosen up a little bit. There we go. Because it's a bit of a jolly old tune. Not really good for Star Trek, I thought. But hey, he wasn't one of the A-list uh, composers. Uh, we are going what for minutes four. What are the bookends of this oh, episode? Oh, uh, well, I'm going to tell everyone what the bookends are, and then Ellie, to you and the listeners, it's confession time. Oh, God. Okay, I think I know what's wrong with all the clips so far. For well, the last five clips. But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we are going from minutes 48 to 50, and it, uh, it starts with the lovely Moon Bloodgood, who Ellie's not sold on yet, playing Blair Williams, uh, a fighter pilot with long hair. I don't know how that works, but I guess it's the future. Who's going to tell you off? Private pile, your hair's too long. <laughs> Fuck you, Sarge. Fuck you. Uh, it starts with her cutting herself down from her, uh, the rigging on her uh, parachute. Mm -hmm. And it ends with a lovely oriental lady about to say something on the transport. Now, this, uh, folks, is confession time. Now, the reason we've got confession time is... Confession. 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 Ooh, 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 ah. Confession. No, that's uh, illusion. But a anyway. couple of episodes back, Ellie, we <laughs> kind of had an extended clip, didn't we? And then you were like, "But the clip doesn't start like that in the next clip." Hmm. I think my editing software, because what I do, uh, folks, is I cut the film into like all the two-minute pieces I need. It takes days, and sometimes either I mess up or the computer does. Now, I'm, in this instance, I'm going to blame the computer. I think the last five clips have been an hour and 50 minutes. Uh, sorry, one minute. Sorry, start again. 50 seconds. So they're under uh, one minute, 50 seconds. Oh, my God. So they're not two minutes. They're 10 or nine minutes, nine seconds. Sorry. See, I'm already fucking up uh, shy of the actual two minutes. I am going to correct this. 
But as the I've only logged up until the next maybe ten episodes, I'm just going to keep doing. Uh, it's going to be the one minute fifty second Terminator. Oh my god! For the next, but that's good news for you folks because that means the aggregate of those extra nine minutes is 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 is, is going to add to maybe one or two extra uh, programs, which is going to warm Ellie's heart no end. <laughs> So you get a full-length episode on a slightly shorter clip. But you know what? Who's counting? Because it's Terminator it 4, folks. It's Terminator <laughs> Salvation. And all these people moseying around in deserts, not really doing anything with uh, not much going on. So what can you do? However, a lot does go on in this show. <laughs> so, Ellie. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right. You, you take well, issue well, with this woman. Time is bef over. Before we started uh, talking, you were like, do you even like this girl, Ethan? As if, to, like, almost like a disgruntled wife going, do you even like her? Did I? Yeah, just the way you said it. I can't remember what film it is, but it's like, is that, is that what you want? Like, what is that film now when a wife's like, there's like a threat to another woman? It's a bit like a Simpsons episode. She's going... Is that what you really want? And then he goes, Why no. would I say that about this particular chick, though? She's no. a chick in a film. No, dear. And then, like, their marriage is renewed. He goes, no, all I want is you. And in real life, obviously, he would have been banging her over the office desk for the last four months. Exactly. And the sister. And the oh, sister. Just... Yeah. Um... We always go for the sister. We, we do try. You didn't. Idiot. I did. Um... I half scored. Mm, not really. And, but just in case sister number two well she well, I guess she was number one at the time uh, listens to this that's all we're going to say about it <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen um, I no why would I have been like what do you think she's thought why would I why would I go funny about this chick uh, that wouldn't make any sense I think you think I think she's hot and I guess she is in a kind of no, na natural no. way I think she is hot no, she's a, she's an attractive woman. But my issue was is whenever they show like a badass chick, she always has to be like Hispanic or I don't know. Oh, yeah, I know you. Well, you said that yesterday, didn't you? No, you're absolutely right. Every time they cast some kind of like strong young female, I think because of obviously they tr they couldn't get Michelle Rodriguez because <laughs> <laughs> she was filming Avatar. I, I guess yeah. Or she was just like, no, I'm not doing Terminator. Even I don't care if I'm working with Sam on Avatar. I, he can go and do that on his own. I'm not Bullshit get Bale's doing it. I'm definitely out. Yeah. Uh... No, but you're right. <laughs> it's uh, They always go for these, like, I guess, not ethnic, but uh, kind of like Mexican slash Spanish, Hispanic. Yeah. Hmm. We can be badass in this, in this day and age too, you know. Come on. I mean, give, well, I mean, give, in, give, in, the, give the little English rose a chance. In non-defense um, of your theory, Ellie, I mean, could you see a ginger running this show? Well, I guess she does in this film, but she's not really proactive. The badass chick in this is obviously the Moon Blood Good. Exactly. And she needs to be a tuzel haired hottie when she tries to seduce Mr. Robot Man, which I don't think is in this clip, but it's. I it's think not it, in this clip, but it's, it's coming up. And it's I'm your, just dreading every it, second of it. It's your biggest bugbear. It took you out of the entire film, didn't it? It did. Yeah. And it's already started in this kind of clip. <laughs> what, she's like flicking her hair like a L'Oreal commercial? What is with the red makeup? It's not an Adamant music video. No. Why did they do that? I Because they're a part of a team and a tribe, aren't they? But no one else has red banding across their eyes. I mean, I would probably be guilty of this if I was hanging by one like strap on my parachute. But like... Is this all part of a super intelligent three steps ahead of Mr. Robot Man's seduction? Like, oh, he'll catch me. Or is she just, just a woman who's not thinking, going, oh, I'm just going to cut the straps. It's only 40 feet. Well, it's not that high at all, is it? It's, it's high enough to fuck you up. Yeah, but, I mean, this is covering actually a couple of the notes that I've got for this particular episode. Well, be he, before we go why on, why he even caught her in the first place? I don't know because it's actually not that high up. Well, it's initially it made it look like it was really high up because that's what I thought when she first cut herself down. I watched it back a couple of times. I was like, how high, how high actually is that? And I was like, actually, they make it look really high, but when she drops, it's actually not that high at all. Mm. It's all a bit of an optical illusion. So why did he catch her in the first place? Was that him trying to? establish his macho-ness it's not an optical I'm illusion i just think the you. way that i think the way they've shot it 
I think maybe it could be in a studio because it looks like, well, she's clearly on wires because she's mm. kind of like her body swings out in the way that looks like she's already <laughs> suspended on an invisible wires. They've painted out with computers. Uh, although Catch I've your got, breath, Ethan. <laughs> that's all right. There was a burp trying to come out, but I was trying to talk, talk it, talk through it. <laughs> I was going, hola, hola, hola. Talking, talking. <laughs> yeah, she's one strapping. Yeah. Uh, she's a one strap jab. <laughs> Well, where'd you say that, Ellie? Because there was, in fact, uh, is she? A, uh, yeah, she's Japanese. Rinko Kikuchi auditioned for the role of uh, Blair Williams. I'm, I'm assuming they weren't going to call her Blair Williams had uh, Rinko actually got the role. But Rinko is the uh, <laughs> the bobble-headed really love interest from Pacific Rim, the one you hated. Yeah. <laughs> um. It's funny because in my notes I got down there, what's your name? I just got Blair Williams. Because <laughs> that's all you can really hear. It took me a little while to realise it was actually Blair. Because she goes, it's Blair Williams. The only, only time I ever think of Blair is Blair the uh, doctor from The Thing who turns into the Blair monster at the end when he's like... Just when you think of Blair Witch. Or that, yeah. Well, you went to the quality film out of the two. Do you actually like Blair Witch? Uh, we've had a listener request, by the way, from John Nichols to play the Maximum Overdrive soundtrack. I've had great trouble, John, finding Maximum Overdrive score. Unless there is no score, it's not available. And the only thing really is... Uh, I think... Is... Uh, I don't know, it's all yeah, ACDC, isn't it? Yeah, it's killing us, dude. <laughs> well, the ACDC did the soundtrack to uh, Maximum Overdrive, and I can't find any actual yeah. score for it. Although the Miami uh, Sound Machine playing in the background now is still from Star Trek Four. Maybe it was a, maybe it was a trick. Maybe it was a ruse to make you look silly on air. <laughs> maybe. Uh, right. And also, what was this comparison with Dita Von Teese and some other bin that looks just like Dita Von Teese? Uh, yeah, because didn't we ask for women from the Terminator, or did we yeah. not? Did we say that? Really, we should be. Com comparing this bin Mrs. Adamant oh yeah because to... when I saw John's thing I was like huh and then my head went to the side like a dog that he just made a loud noise a squeaky yeah. noise and you all went Ooh. we both went Ooh, at the same time separately of course <laughs> so Ellie secondly I thought there was going to be a second point there no no that was only one point I just was oh, confused shit. as to like I mean who, who were the two people he recommended you got to love that time delay the two people were, let's have a look. So I'm just going to go into my uh, Facebook app. Uh, it was Dita Von Teese, and the other chick looks almost exactly the same as her, which really confused me. Oh, Sherilyn Fenn. Is uh, that the lady's name? Yeah. Sherilyn Fenn was like one of the hot chicks of the 80s from like Twin Peaks and stuff, and people went crazy for her. Her uh, they went crazy for her Twin Peaks? I would have thought, because there was two <laughs> women from that era, Sherilyn Fenn and someone else. Oh, it's uh, definitely Dita. Uh, no, at the time, Sherilyn Fenn is the better-looking woman. Uh, I encourage... Ooh, why? Uh, uh, just facially, she's better. Dita Von Teese has got a nice body, but Sherilyn Fenn is facially better. Whoa. Uh, I encourage John and the other listeners to Google Sherilyn Fenn now, though, uh, because she's not good. Why is she facially better than Dita Von Teese? Uh, she was just more classically beautiful. Dita Von Teese just looks like me if I shaved all my facial hair off and put a fright wig on from a joke shop. So what makes uh, Sherilyn uh, more classically beautiful? Talk to me. What's classic beauty, Ethan? Uh, she's got... <laughs> classic beauty! <laughs> she's got a less long face. She's got a shorter nose. You could argue that they're kind of very similar in genre. And out of the two, I think Sherilyn is the better looking one. Dita Von Teese is the one that would go ass to mouth on the first date, though, and that's probably why you'd go out with Dita. There seems to be, like, a, a divide between sex and beauty, Ethan. What do you choose? Uh, sometimes, if you're lucky, you can get both in the same wonderful woman. <laughs> like your ex? Well, loads of them, really. <laughs> <laughs> they were just cunts <laughs> anyway Ellie come back to the clip sorry yes so uh, I thought it was a very nonchalant way that uh, 
considering this is the first time they've met, Marcus just goes, you're right, love. She's got remarkably lovely teeth as well for a are post-apocalyptic you okay? wasteland. Are you all right? Do you not think that, you know, you, you've just met someone. I just thought it was, he's speaking to her like he knows her. Or like they've just, you know, done like a little hand glider thing together. You all right? Safe landing? Yeah, sweet. It was good. Cheers, mate. Did yeah, you they're... just hand me that knife out of my boot? Yeah, cheers, son. <laughs> yeah, but I think... It's they've... not like, who the fuck are you? Because they've got that mutual attraction between each other. There's that kind of shorthand develops instantly. So, a Terminator that can now have sexual desire. Well, I mean, we've discussed his ad infinitum <laughs> on this show, but is he a robot? Is he a man? Spaulding thinks he's a bit like Wolverine. He's got a bit of metal on his bones, and the rest of him is, like, normal. But as okay. we see, I'm going to spoil it for you, everyone. If you if you are just watching he, the film in two minute increments, uh, what's wrong with you? Uh, no, well, no. There's a scene later when he pulls like a piece out of his robot brain. <laughs> Sorry. His robot brain. He pulls out his piece, right? No, he pulls like a chunk out of his robot brain. Now, I, my question would be to Spaldner for this future episode. So please study the film. When he does that, when he's talking to. Uh, the imaginary face of Helena Bonham Carter on a computer screen. Hmm. Uh, he pulls this thing out the back of his head. Now, is that all of his brain is a robot or he's just got this piece in the back of his brain which kind of is monitoring him and vaguely controlling him? I don't know. I'd probably go with the second one. Yeah, Spalter's probably right. He's right about the uh, the guns. Awesome. Spaldner. Again, we salute you, sir. You know this way better than we do. Cock up. I've only ever seen this film once. Cock, Cock up. When Marcus rescues Blair from the gang, shortly after they meet up first, uh, it's dark and pouring down heavily. Right after Marcus somehow manages to f uh, find dry wood to burn, uh, the ground and everything around them is completely dry. Uh, this is obviously for a cock up from another clip, but I fitted them in wherever I could when I was uh, months ago. Uh, it's basically in the next or the next death of the next scene is when they're uh, trying to find firewood and it's torrentially raining and uh, mm. Marcus had remarkably finds some and starts a fire. Oh, I am um, that. I fucking hate that shit. Why would he? Why would he bother to catch her when it's such a short fall? Uh, because you've got to develop a bond between these two characters, and he kind of like weirdly captures and rescues her. But does he capture her heart? Mm, Cock no. up. Cock up. When Blair, or Moon Bloodgood, is hanging suspended by a parachute tangled in a tower, she asks Marcus to hand her her knife to cut herself down. She then proceeds to cut her way through the right parachute riser right after she falls free. She ignores the canopy release on her shoulder designed to release the parachute in less than a second. <laughs> However, the left side has already been released and uh, she did not have the knife to cut it yet. Any fighter pilot has to use both releases every time they fly. Uh, once to attach the parachute, which is packed into the ejection seat, not worn, and uh, then to release it again uh, after the exit of the plane. It is incomprehensible that they would not know how to release it properly. <laughs> it may be possible, however, that the release was jammed or damaged. But because she is a woman. <laughs> well, I mean, you could argue that because they're like a ragtag bunch of strangers flying all this military equipment they're not properly trained pilots but i would ask anyone is that possible because she would just black out flying because not many people can actually fly can they they can't take no. the g's there would have to be some sort of training also i went back to the uh, previous clip when i was watching this when you uh, hear the voice of the person williams it sounds like a dude why the voice sounds like a dude. What do you mean, why? Well, when she no says why. Blair Williams. No. You hear you hear the pilot speaking to John. Oh, John's like, over I the told radio. You, eject, John, eject. Blah, blah, blah. On the radio, it's, it's a dude's voice. It's maybe to confuse the audience, though, because then you go, oh, a woman. We have come far in uh, positive role models for females in cinema. But again, it's just like there's no consistency. Which I find hilarious, by the way, because occasionally you'll see a feminist blogger that go, why are there no strong female roles in cinema? You go, uh, every James Cameron film for the last 30 fucking years, for one. Uh, Alien with Ridley Scott. Uh, we could go on. I'm not going to because exactly. they're the only examples I know. But. <laughs> <laughs> Women's, women are damsels and that's what they want to be. Um. <laughs> I think feminists just need to watch more films. 
I think feminists just need to start taking the pill again. Um, shave their legs and their armpits. <laughs> Go out in a nice summer dress. Get honked at by a few white van men and they'll be fine. <laughs> And get yourself an ice cream whilst you're at it. Uh, but then go for a run because you don't want fat size. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I just thought, why would he catch her? I don't know. Again, they don't know that they're on the same side at this point, do they? Well, again, Ellie, he's wearing a resistance jacket. Yes, he got it from a dead guy. But also, he is a person. And he's not tried to either rape or kill her yet. So... I guess she sees him as her friend. I don't know. Sometimes you meet people and you kind of have that instant rapport, don't you? So, like, chemistry, if you will. Can you have chemistry with the Terminator? Well, in this, this instance, This is the same I guess, question yes. I'm going to be asking throughout this whole film. Uh, yes, I he's don't an, know he's how a, much of him is Terminator and how much of him He's an infiltration is. unit. He can infiltrate your base and also your heart. <laughs> So he then says. Also, oh, I mean, you know, you're where more, is that thing going? You're more inclined to trust people if you fancy them, aren't you? That's why generally, I think if, women. Generally, if I generally if I fancy someone, I'd probably trust them less. Because <laughs> no. I know that my I know that I'm being led by my loins, and my loins are always fucking ridiculous. <laughs> No, I know, but like if if you fancy a girl or a dude, like when you start talking to them, there's there's kind of like there's more barrier down and there's less inhibition, isn't there? So I think meeting this dude, she's like, oh, he's a hot, handsome Wayne Rooney lookalike. God, I'd like to give him some zig zig pie. Oh God, if we did have any female female listeners, we could have done a uh, Rooney or Marcus Wright. But uh, I don't think we have many female uh, listeners. I don't think we have many uh, listeners, as the quality of the show rises and dips depending on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you. Um, so, we have this discussion between the two of them. He's just like, where's that thing going? And she goes, oh, what, the uh, people carrier? She's no, and like, he oh, just points at his dick and just raises his, he raises his eyebrows. <laughs> that's Skynet, you know. If you, if you want to go there, uh, if, if you've got people inside that thing, then, you know... Good luck. So now I'm thinking before he was obviously concerned about saving himself, maybe, but now he feels obliged to save the kids. Uh, what is Marcus's actual mission? Like, what is he? What is he trying to achieve? Where is he trying to get to? I'm very confused. I think he's just a bit lost and confused. I also think there's some kind and of. And like... also, considering he's come out of like a coma or whatever he's been in, he knew exactly who he was. Well, he does, yes, but I he's think. Like, oh, I'm Marcus. <laughs> like, well, okay. I think he's just trying to get answers. I think deeply programmed into him in some kind of weird algorithm is kind of his mission to kind of infiltrate and find John Connor. I think her saying John Connor alters his mission. I think he'd probably be heading towards is Skynet. Is that why he pulls that weird smiley face when she says, you know, well, I thought it was quite funny because she goes, "Why don't you come to my base, Connor, Mike Norway?" I was like, "Yeah, come on my base, you dirty bitch." Um. Connor kind of has this wry smile, kind of like creeps upon his face when he says, when she says John Connor. And, and then he goes, like, Ooh. I've heard of that name before. I would like to meet him. <laughs> exactly. It's like, do you think that... I'm acting like a robot? Because I'm not. I'm really a man. And she's like, it was almost easy. like recognition. Do you not think? Yeah, totally. That's what I read from it. And I was yeah. just like, so well, he knows who John Connor is. Or obviously maybe that's the Terminator bit. Like, Well, I think there would have been a far more interesting story, I think, had Christian Bale not played John Connor and they'd gone for a smaller star. Because I think this role would have been more boosted up. Because I think up to this point is Sam Worthington's film and then it just gets lost in translation. So I think, uh, again, Marcus Wright being this, like, Jesus Christ type character, this saviour who rises from the grave and, like, frees the people. Like a wet fish. Yeah. And you frame. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I didn't really understand what his mission was, although you've kind of helped me with that now. His mission is to infiltrate the humans a... and I'm I don't know whether he'd ever actually reveal himself. I think maybe Skynet is he's transmitting stuff to Skynet all the time, maybe. So why would he then chase after the kids who are being taken back to Skynet? Because that's like the opposite of where John Connor is. Because he's still human, and the first people he's met that he actually trusts in this like bizarre world he's woken up into. And he, I suppose he's got a lot. Two children. Yeah, 
And he's got heroism in his heart, I guess. That's his human side. But I think underneath all that, a bit like the thing, as we've discussed, if you were the thing in reality, would you know you the thing? Would you know you were this like in intergalactic space disease monster? Until <laughs> or would it just break out of you when the time is right? It would like activate a bit like a Manchurian candidate type thing. Isn't that what he is? He's basically human, but like when the time is right. Uh, his his Manchurian cannoness will act, will candidateness will activate or he he's constantly transmitting to Skynet and they're just waiting to see well, what he does Connor and where was he like goes. Maybe trip word. Maybe as soon as she said Connor, that's like set something and it's like set a trip wire and is. Yeah, he's like the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Oh, so hot. Yeah. Not you, Marcus. <laughs> Also, I have a question for you, Ethan. I always hear this in films. They're like, oh, that's two days' hike away. The base is two days' hike away, or blah, blah, blah. When they say that, what? How what? are they gauging this? How are they gauging this kind of like time scale? When you, when you say it's a two day hike, is that like constantly walking? Is that like allowing for breaks? Are you allowed like a bathroom break? Like, I don't know. I've always wondered that about films. How do they calculate how, how long away this is? I don't know, but I would say like, they're so remarkably close to actual Skynet, which is where the kind of people carrier heads off to. Mm. Which, all, you know what, weirdly, uh, in the scene previous to this, when you see the people carrier like shooting away, you can quite clearly see Skynet in the near background. It looks like an oil refinery with like smoke coming out of it. Here we are in the next scene where this thing is presumably still traveling and uh, mm. the people carrier has made the turn in the air and you can't see anything for miles. So how would they feed themselves and water themselves and so, things like that? If they're trekking for two days, they're going to need sustenance. Well, I was going to... She's got no backpack. Oh, no, and it's like the desert and stuff. Yeah. Arid. I mean, what you, I guess, you'd have to do really is kind of try and, try and get into the shadow, the, the uh, shadows and like sleep in the day and then travel at night where it's like bitterly cold. Yeah, but this moon bloodstone bitch, whatever her fucking name is. She's on a mission of her own to get some She's robot on a mission dick. Of her own. <laughs> <laughs> to get Terminator dick. <laughs> Which is not Moon really yet. Blair Williams was on a mission to get her pussy terminated. <laughs> but instead, found Wayne Rooney. <laughs> Who could. <laughs> God, I can't think of a football analogy. It's because football's shit. Um. <laughs> Who could get down her defences and put one in the back of her net? Yes! Well done. Get through her defences. Oh, whatever. I don't watch football. Get over it. <laughs> yeah, no. She tells him they're heading towards Skynet. In the previous scene, you see them being flown towards an oil refinery thing. And then you think, well, maybe that's not Skynet. Maybe that's just the concentration camp. But she does say Skynet. And at the end of this clip... Or at least in the hour, like the one hour, one, one minute thirty second area of the cliff, they're just going over the mountains. So Sky yeah. is nowhere to be seen. So do they just go on a pleasure cruise. There's like pleasure a gay it. robot on the roof going, "If you look to the side, you can see the mountains of bloody blah, blah. Aren't they pretty? Oh God." Yeah. Anyway, I reckon from this particular scene that all saints are doing all the styling on all these clothes because it does kind of look very old saints back in like 2008 or 9 yeah maybe. Her, her leather flight jacket which is clearly yeah, not a regular the flight boots jacket and that's a question that actually of... for our military uh, bobbleheads out there <laughs> she couldn't fly in that outfit could she because she'd need a flight suit and yeah you definitely need to cut your hair off is she wearing a flight suit under that jacket I don't know but I don't know I know it's a film. Where would stuff. all the hair go in the helmet? Exactly. Silly bitch. Just shave it off, babe. Probably look hot for it anyway. She probably would, actually. She probably would. She probably would. <laughs> to shave or not to shave, that is the question. Well, this is nobler in the oh, mind to Don suffer Nichols. the slings and arrows of outrageous What's fortune. What? What's the name of this bird? Moon Blood Good. John, your next mission, should you choose to accept it, Moon blood good. You need to do a comparison. You need to get a picture of her normally, and then you need to do a picture of her balls, and then we will decide which is hot, which is hot or not. <laughs> in in John's non-defense, I think his bald heads <laughs> need a bit of work. <laughs> I look like the freaking Mekon from the Eagle comic no, when he did that's me. Just you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then he tried to fit the same head into the Ian Brady wig. <laughs> I love that. I really <laughs> liked that. I thought it was great. I still think that me, uh, they great. see me rolling in my uh, baby car is the best one yet. That that is the best one yet. Amazing. So good. Literally got like 50 likes. Not on the <laughs> likes chaser, but for me, that was pretty impressive. I was like, oh my gosh, this is really kicked off. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we'll return uh, probably later with episode 26, unless Ellie's got a hot date and. Uh, yeah, we'll return then, basically, I think. Uh, we'll return with episode uh, 26. <laughs> it's minutes 50 to 52. And uh, there's only one line of trivia for that. No cock-ups and no homework. So, Ellie, you're going to have to uh, pull one Make lots of notes. Make lots it's of... It's all right. If you're not making moon... lots of love, you need to be making moon, lots of love. moon face is in it now, so I'm going to have lots to qualm about. <laughs> Thank you all for listening, everyone. We shall return uh, later or tomorrow with the episode or Friday's episode, episode five, which will be episode 26. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then. <laughs> Wayne Rooney. <laughs>